Hi, uh, welcome all. Welcome to QFirst Ask Me Anything session. My name is Rohan. Uh, I am one. I am one of the co-founders of QFirst. So, what is QFirst? QFirst is an on-demand mentorship platform which uh, meets uh, meets all your mentorship needs. So, we basically at QFirst strongly believe that uh, there is no limits in getting help, and we want to ensure mentorship is viable and available to all our individuals who are seeking it. So, we basically have a community of leaders, experts, or mentors, how we call them as. and uh, they are available in various from various fields and domains and individuals seeking mentorship can access our platform and browse through the curator list mentor and a personalized one on one session with them please feel free feel free to access www.cubus.com to browse through our mentors and arrange a personalized session with them and today we have mr uh, anirban bhattacharya welcome welcome a uh, mentor himself and he is the founder of ubq tt design team in school and the paint welcome sir thank you and today's about design thinking and mike uh, to mr anirban and we'll probably have a small description about what design thinking is and we'll uh, jump off to ask me anything any questions okay well, you know what here's the way it is i talk design thinking so much during the week i don't like to talk about it during the weekend <laughs> so since right. it's um, since it's a call, it's a meeting uh, it's a it's a zoom call yeah uh let's just go straight into question and answer I mean, sure. i'm assuming that there are uh if i take out the three of us there are 15 16 people here right you right. guys joining a design thinking session because a you're interested in it or you know about it or you have some right. understanding so right. let's move straight into the ask me anything part of it i'd rather uh, yeah definitely yeah, that's not a problem i do have a few questions from the we'll start with that okay how important is design thinking in today's world and what benefits does one get by learning it okay let me ask the audience yeah how many of you here are familiar with design thinking can we have some audience uh, can we have a thumbs up by the audience or a thumbs down and yeah something like that something like that or s yes or no yeah great ah there are people coming in with no idea lovely Okay, then you are Much. good. Okay, so I see one hand. The I, I uh, mean, curious to know. Yes, yes, curious to know. Okay. okay, so let me give you. Okay, so then I think Rohan, your idea was better that I talk a little bit about design thinking. I assumed people know design thinking. No idea. No worries. So, design thinking, if I put it very quickly. Mm -hmm. the other name for design thinking is what we call human centered design right or in this age and day of user experience ux design that we so easily talk about mm -hmm. it is keeping the user of our product service whatever it is that we are trying to build at the center of our building process okay that automatically right. means that we have to understand the user understand his current realities Her current challenges, needs, interests, etc., deeply, because as deeply as we can, right from who she is, what she is experiencing, mm -hmm. why she is experiencing what she is experiencing, how she is using our product, service, or something other than our products and services, whatever it is, then understand what are the opportunities, therefore, that exist for us to create something that will right. fill in those gaps in what she is looking for. Mm. what are the problems maybe she's experiencing in the current experience that she has and then in an agile iterative creative innovative manner come up with as many different solutions as we can prototype them and test them with the user so that we can quickly come up with solutions that work and that has has at each level the user needs in mind so if right. i If I bring it down to a fundamental level, I say that the design thinking journey mm. is a journey of three E's. The letter E. You are yep. always driving towards better experience. Mm -hmm. Okay, and to get there, there are two things you are trying to do. You are trying to empathize with the human being. Right. You know, developing great empathy through the through the empathy lens. Try right. and understand how a user or a person is experiencing life today. Mm -hmm. and constantly experimenting with your ideas with your solutions etc so therefore constant prototyping 
so that you come up with the best solution for the user, which is also the most viable and feasible in terms of, you know, technologically what you can manage and yeah. financially what makes sense. Right. If I say that design thinking is where the three spheres of what is technologically feasible today mm -hmm. within your keep, keep capability, capacity, whatever, what is financially viable, which is within your budgets, etc. And what is user desirable? If you bring the three like concentric cir three circles, like a Venn diagram, where they intersect, that's where good design thinking design takes thinking. place. Great. Okay, so that's design thinking. Very yeah. simple. Now there are, design thinking isn't really new as a concept. Mm -hmm. It starts back in 1960s. Right. I studied design thinking in two different schools and University of Virginia, then Hasso Plattner Institute in Germany. Okay. And uh, we do design thinking with everyone from government agencies to NGOs to gigantic corporates to, you know, startups, etc. Mm -hmm. And in everything, the conversation links to the same thing. How well do we know our user? And we build our products and services. Okay. And if we don't, then what we have could be a solution bias. Right. Based on our limited understanding, we jump to conclusions very quickly. And that's often enough where products and services or solutions fail because we haven't managed to understand the user as a human being. Mm -hmm. Okay. We build something that either is not good enough for her or is difficult for her too complex. Maybe we haven't understood her life. Maybe I'll give you an example. Maybe we are using building an application mm -hmm. where the human being who's going to use it is a, is a human being, is a, is a housewife with five minutes of time and we haven't considered her reality that she's busy on a working day with children, family, etc. She has only five minutes to give, but the application needs 15 minutes to run. Mm. So it fails. Either she does it badly or she doesn't do it at all. Good. Yeah. Right. So if we didn't consider her reality, we wouldn't keep that in mind when we are building a solution. Now mm. to go back to your question about the relevance of it, well, you now think of it. In a competitive market where we are constantly trying to build the better app, better tool, better product. Yeah. Knowing the customer, knowing the user is central to everything. Gigantic organizations from a Microsoft to a Wells Fargo has in its values put customer obsession. What does that even mean? It means understanding the customer better mm -hmm. in everything. Right. Understanding the life of the customer and seeing how can our products and services make it easier and better for her. Right. Only when we understand, do we build the good products? Right. So I think that should answer your question that can we therefore yeah. build something today or at any time without building, understanding the customer, because we are no longer in the time where a customer has loyalty to one bank. Doesn't matter like mm -hmm. our father's time or would wear one watch through his life or drive the same car through his life. Yeah. He's constantly changing. We okay. need to keep understanding that changing perspective repeatedly and an ongoing basis. Only then can our products remain up to date. That's why design thinking is a universal skill where whenever we are trying to solve for people, we need to build that. And uh, just from a, from the, from the thought of you explaining, how do you think it's been implemented in India since you have been in the U S and in the Germany, you have seen the perspective of the world or, and uh, different governments and uh, people uh, actually implementing it. How do you think it is in India? Well, I think we are very nascent in India as of now. What hmm. you right. And it has to do with two things. Primarily the way we are educated in India, technical education, primarily focuses hmm. on us quickly getting to a solution. Sometimes right. we don't even invest time to understand the question. We have to write an answer. Okay. We are constantly converging and that happens in corporate culture. Also, we reward people to quickly come to solution where design thinking says, slow down, understand people and problems first. Right. Only then you will be able to solve. So that's one. Secondly, if you go back to our work, uh, evolution of our culture, we have been pretty much a services in, in industry where we have been, uh, we have not really been in touch with customers and often enough in large corporates, customers are sitting far away. You're not even interacting with them. Yeah. You never needed to know them. You never needed to have empathy. 
you were given a mandate by a product manager sitting somewhere in the us and you were told line write these lines of code build this functionality build this feature you don't know where it lands you don't know how people use it and you were happy that way so i think when we started doing design thinking back in 2010 nobody cared about it it's only in the last 4 5 years that we are seeing a huge demand for it mm-hmm. simply because companies are realizing that we will not survive in this in this cloud based economy where solutions have to be delivered real time Right. Since between a customer and a service providing, okay, we are all customer facing today. So mm-hmm. you can't mm-hmm. sit back and say that I will only code. Someone else will deal with customer. We are all customer facing. So right. I think I am very heartened by what I am seeing in the last few years. But we have a long way to go because that change is happening. But is it happening fast enough? Because that change has to happen at an education level. Also, to me, the change has to happen in our minds. we have to develop a genuine interest in customers or human beings innovation is impossible without empathy we yeah. cannot learn tools of innovation without understanding the philosophy of innovation then it doesn't work mm-hmm. so i think we are seeing that change happen slowly but surely it's taking place slow and steady but it's going to take place soon we are seeing that yes yeah great um just to the audience i'll be taking up questions from the chat as well while i ask the other questions thank you so the next one is how to overcome the creative block how can we help the organization with the help of design thinking in the creative right. block yeah. so when you talk of creative block it depends on the context of a creative block okay mm. there are two levels one is your individual creative block and the second is your organization's culture that creates a creative block right, right? perfect yeah. individually again i think it's a factor of the way we are educated etc we where is creative block coming from i don't think we are lacking in creativity look at the amount of jugar that we do to get things done it's not that we have lack of creativity but we have a fear of failure we are afraid of what will happen if we fail okay the environment we operate in has to therefore change that supports us to say that it's okay if you of course if you fail and sink a billion dollars of your client's money then of course it's a big deal mm-hmm. but if you build a fear of failure at everything that people become scared of risk taking and you are constantly compliant you are constantly only following what you are supposed to do then you will never innovate then you will never try something new innovation is nothing but trying something new right successful innovation is when that succeeds but if you go back and i'm sure all of us are reading enough memes in the market and uh, getting knowledge from whatsapp that says that you know how many times thomas edison failed and how many times uh, innovators failed so the fact is fear of failure is something we need to remove now how do we do that is the question you should ask and i think in my experience in our experience in our firms what we have seen is it's when we can build a culture of prototyping when we right. believe that nothing is a final product think of it and let me ask you and your audience can you tell me the name or give me the example of one human produced product which you can say is in its ultimate version is in its final version that cannot be improved give me the example of one it's very difficult for you to find that yeah however nature is perfect i mean you can't build a better tree you can't right. create better Uh, air or water right now what does that mean that the human productive process is constantly experimenting and improving today you have the iphone 12 or 11 in the market next year they will generate the iphone 12 do you consider iphone 11 a failure okay no if you are going to be a creative organization and a creative person you have to say that whatever we are building is a prototype for the next version if you start thinking from that perspective rohan what happens yeah. is you start thinking that nothing is a failure we are learning from why our product or service a got rejected or what's the feedback coming saying how might we improve if we have that attitude of continuous improvement then what happens is we take out the idea the word failure goes away and then the block that you are saying goes out because we are con- we are ready to experiment the more we experiment 
the more successful we get. And the more successful we are, it builds our creative confidence. And the more confident we are, it reduces yeah. our creative block. So it's a virtuous cycle that we have to keep building on. And the more we do that, the better we get. It's, it's about how better we are getting every year rather than just showing off the yeah, final product. Better. This is the final product and that's it. You take it and go. Absolutely. In design thinking, if I bring it back, when we do our sessions, workshops, coaching, etc., yeah. the first thing we tell people is that if you're building a solution, if you have an idea and you're prototyping it and you're going to test it with the user, yeah. user testing is a very critical skill. Too often, the developer or the creator, let's say, mm. ends up selling the idea, trying to convince the user why this idea is a great idea. But that's the last thing you should do. Because if your prototype is failing, your user is telling you why he doesn't like it. If you can take that learning, put it into the next version yeah. and go into this agile iterative cycle, right. the final version you create, maybe version 5.0, mm -hmm. doesn't matter, is something that's likely to succeed more. Your creative block goes because your confidence builds. It's the whole idea of design thinking. Right. Okay, great. Uh, next one, we'll take it up from the chat. So Agile has caught up in a big way while it talks about deploying in, in an iterative manner. Could you talk about design thinking in this perspective and how it fits in Agile Scrum environment? It's a great question. And I think I just talked to, to about this. Uh, I was on another webinar on Friday and I kind of addressed this, but it's a good question to ask. Right. I think if you think of it from this perspective, design thinking and Agile have seen, have uh, very strong overlaps. Mm -hmm. The simple reason being that design thinking also like agile believes in the iterative process of constantly ideating, prototyping, testing, learning, improving, prototyping, testing, and so on and so forth in a contracting cycle. It's the same with, let's say a lean process that we would talk. Right. Yeah. Now the, where design thinking fits in, and I think, uh, Matthew, you've asked a good question. A lot of times when we are working with organizations, those organizations have leaders who are agile and scrum experts, Six Sigma experts, Kaizen, Kanban, Trace, you name it, they're bringing it in. And we always say that there is no conflict. They are always complementary. Where design thinking strength lies is that a good design thinker coming from a good designer has no interest or no fascination to the end solution. He's there to discover the human experience with an open mind. The more he discovers, the more he sees it, uh, opportunities to solve. Maybe those are product ideas or opportunities or problems that he's discovering. Once he has applied empathy, the first stage of design thinking, the observation synthesis part of it. Yeah. After that, it's, I would say the agile process takes over right from defining the problem, ideating, mm -hmm. prototyping and testing. It is agile cycles that repeat themselves, but where design, so to me, design thinking complements it by beautifully helping people understand the problem, understand the people facing the problem and then framing the problem in a human centered way. Let me give you an example. Let us say, you're in Bangalore, Rohan. Where are you based? I'm based out of Chennai. I work in Bangalore. Okay, so right now, where are you? No, right now in Chennai. In Chennai, but you are you know Bangalore. Yeah, yeah. So if you know, where's your office in Bangalore? BTM layout. BTM layout. So Silk Board. Yeah. Is a familiar location for you, right? Right. So now let us say we have uh, for those who are not familiar with Bangalore, Silk Board is an architectural marvel. Okay where you end up spending much of your life caught in traffic jam. <laughs> okay. And now here's the thing. Now today I can, I have two choices. I can say, how can I build a better bridge over Silk Road? Okay. How might we build a better bridge over Silk Road? I can do that. If I do yeah. that, what I will do there is I will look at what are the, you know, how's the road, how's the load of traffic of people. Yeah time, all of that. Alternatively, I can frame the question, how might I get Rohan to cross skill code in 50% less time? What is the difference between the two questions? 
In the second question, that's a design thinkers question. We call it a human centered question. I'm not talking right. bridge anymore. The problem with the first question is the solution, a bridge is already embedded in the question. Doesn't matter how creative you are, you will end up building a bridge. In the second question, bridge is an option for you. You can build a tunnel. I can give you a jet pack. I can ask you, why do you want to cross? Work from home. So many creative options get opened up by just changing the question from a product or a process centered question to a people centered question. Right. Right. After that, if I've managed to understand the problem well, mm -hmm. Agile can now solve it fast. And we are all good there. So there is no conflict. They complement each other. Right. I hope that answers Matthew's question. Uh, the next one is from Richa Sony. Are there any organization or a company that would hire only for design process? What would design process mean, Richa? Richa, I think uh, we'll get your answer in the next chat. Until then, I'll go for the okay. Until then, I'll go for the next one. How do we convince the management in a mid-level company to start implementing design thinking into operations? I mean, it's a good question. Uh, Manoj, I sense a lot of frustration in you <laughs> in that question. But yeah. that's not easy. I won't even go to a point of mid-level company. I would say yeah. even gigantic companies are not always open to get into design thinking. But that is changing. So my suggestion, and it's not just about design thinking. I've been into corporate training now for 10 years and... You know, I've been in sales for the last 26 years. Mm -hmm. If you have to sometimes change mindsets, you have to start small. Always a good idea to start with a pilot and showcase success. At the end of the day, think of it from this perspective. Think of it from this perspective. If you are going to be in sales or if you are going to even do a presentation, mm. it starts by every conversation starts by... <laughs> Know your audience, know your customer. Design thinking starts by saying exactly the same thing. Know the customer better before you solve. So in a lot of ways, I would say it is common sense. So if we can explain it to the leadership team that this is something that you're doing anyway, what is design thinking asking? Design thinking is saying before jumping into solutioning, before creating a product or a solution, spend a little time researching. Let me assure you, even a little bit of research can change your perspective of what a product or a solution should be. Right. Once you succeed, it's that much easier to convince your management. And I'm not just talking of small or mid-sized. Even the largest have the same problem. Okay. Of course, you have to remember that smaller organizations are under pressure to deliver faster. I mean, I do a lot of work with startups and they don't really have the time at times because their pressures are different. So it's just what you have to do. Do it in small pockets and see what happens. Great. I hope that answers your question, Manoj. We'll take up a question from Facebook. Um, this question is, what's the best design structure in designing a real estate site for premium properties? It's not a design thinking question at all. So I'm going to yes. skip um, that entirely. Yeah. I'll be talking to architects for that uh, who are far better equipped than I am. I'm just a humble design thinker. That's a question <laughs> for better people. Got it. We'll move on to the next one. I think Richa has come back with uh, design process for me is a creative solution. I'm be, I've been working for about 2.5 years and hired to get new and creative ideas, but companies are never ready to experiment. I think that's, I think that's the same answer which you gave for the yeah, last I question. Think I gave you that, Richa. Again, the point is I totally understand, yeah. empathize with you. You also have to understand that, you know what, there is a reason why the company feels that way. Correct. You have to figure it out. Maybe, you know, demonstrate some success, do some small projects, just do a quick research and describe that. How will design thinking approach change? Let's say a product feature. You don't have to overhaul. You'll have to start small and build momentum. And that's pretty much not just in design thinking, but in any success, that's pretty much where I think it starts. Right. So I'll go back to the questions which we got earlier. Right. And this one is about photography. So do you think design thinking from a, can we have a thinking of 
design thinking from a photography perspective can it be applied to a photography perspective as well i think it can be applied to all the perspective i mean to all the products that you are aware of uh, i think is the question regarding how can you be a better photographer or no no it's about if you can apply design thinking to photography uh, field or the field of photography or domain i don't know maybe you can <laughs> yeah I'll just go on to the next one are design philosophy and design thinking the same thing or not how is that uh, different i think okay uh i would say that design is not the same as design thinking that's the first thing you have to keep in mind right so if you ask for design philosophy it again depends on which definition or who you're asking design thinking borrows heavily on the design process or i would say good design process uh too often unfortunately good design is a very rare thing people this are more focused on creating artifacts and they call it design good design is problem solving at the end of the day finding a right problem and solving in the best possible way so design thinking definitely is very very deeply connected on that uh so i would say but however design thinking is essentially driven by a corporate industry driven approach where you want to build products and services that work in the market so i think design thinking starts with the design process design philosophies of empathy experimentation solutioning etc but then it moves further because a yeah. lot of time goes into making sure that the implemented ideas are implementable the ideas right. work so i think yes there are overlaps design thinking is completely reliant on design i think a lot of, a lot of time is being spent on testing the whole uh, idea on uh, right. user based on user needs and the next one is a general question it it's like what are the future career opportunities in design is there a good uh, good market in india for design thinking and design thinking opportunities and can it become like a like a for example a code coders role or a software development can design thinking become a career in india right it is as i mentioned to you earlier it is changing very rapidly as we are mm-hmm. seeing i think the demand for design thinking is growing the demand for design is growing okay i would say the there are a lot of organizations that earlier looked at design as just how to make something pretty as packaging or color etc are now understanding the value of design up and down the value chain right from start conceptualizing of a product or an idea all the way to implementation and design is driving that i would say in a big way so i would say yes it is growing uh unfortunately there aren't too many institutes that offer design thinking courses ubiquity does uh of course we did before covid but we will restart that i think in the month of august uh in terms of job opportunities there are there they are mm. growing as we speak but i think a lot of those job opportunities are not directly in the saying that it's a role for design thinking but it's more coming <laughs> user experience design kind of a thing so if you look at the space of ux yeah ux essentially is demanding people who have design thinking skills ui is more from the perspective of what the end result is okay. designing the interface yeah But user experience design is fundamentally about understanding human experiences right and therefore that that's where we are seeing a lot of design thinking requirements landing up and yeah. tomorrow of course the fact is we are looking at organizations around the world looking at design thinking as an essential skill for tomorrow as we are looking at more automation more i think ai coming in it is a human being's ability to solve problems using empathy which is making design thinking a very desired skill in companies so around the world there's a massive demand for people with design thinking capabilities coming up because yeah. they are the ones who can look at the future needs of users so today if i spend a couple of days just understanding your life rohan yeah how are you from waking up to going to sleep how what are you doing i am skilled enough to understand that in that there could be three new product ideas i can come up with which i could take to market maybe over the next year and that's pretty much what companies value because in a competitive market and also the other way of looking at it if i have a product already that you are using yeah let us say you are using a crm solution to a hardware product 
or a website or an app or whatever and i want to understand how are you using it by just observing how you're using it or empathizing with you i might understand how might how might i improve that again that's a very desired skill in a competitive market so i would say yes that desire or that demand is growing as well right. great there's a couple of questions in the chat so there's a question from prashant i have a company with a team of 25 members we usually work on giving new design ideas to contractual company so let us know uh, is there any way to gauge new requirement the level of skill they have new recruitment but uh, yeah gauge new recruitment the level of skill they have okay uh <clears throat> i am assuming prashant you're asking about the your new hires their skill level is that what you're saying i if i go with that because i am working on that word recruitment here i would say well you know the fact is there are people who come with design diplomas who unfortunately don't really know too much about design thinking because unfortunately in india design education isn't necessarily really that advanced where yeah. problem solving is really the focus it's more about creating shiny objects which is why if you look at if an entrance exam into most design schools require your portfolio where they look at how can you sketch why should a designer need to sketch if tomorrow his role is to do empathy interviews and create problems and he might need to code better as a result of it. so that's a different part i think the best way for you to do that we do that we do the same thing is give the person a project give the person maybe a week 10 days to kind of give a problem statement and tell him to come back with three great ideas or three prototypes or one prototype and see what he can do and then ask him how he did it did he just quickly jump to a conclusion without engaging with users in that case he has no design thinking capabilities or interest mm. or did he follow the process of engaging with human beings before he came to a conclusion okay. i would say that's how we do it and i think it generally works i would expect i would suggest that to you thanks thanks for the answer anirban let's go for the next question from clinton when one minute yeah so when we start a startup should we think about design thinking from the very start first day or should we wait until a certain stage to start planning and implementation ah oh, clinton if he had an answer to that question you know uh -huh. uh, here's the thing and honestly that's a fantastic question and there is no straight answer to that if you ask me ideally where is your startup idea uh -huh. coming from too often and there was a study that google did i think in 2014 that close to 95% of startup ideas come from personal pain of the founder the per the founder struggled to do a bus reservation or a taxi hiring or something and he decided that's a great idea to create a startup 95% of those cases are like that 95% startups also fail i will leave you to leave do that correlation i am not saying now now just because it's a very serious question you're asking i cannot trivialize that now the fact is ideally you should do research to discover where is the scope for your startup rather than blindly come up with a product idea which may or may not work but it right. too often startups unfortunately when they are in the startup stage already past the ideation idea stage they're already running you're already under pressure to get something out and god help you if you've already got an investor okay then then sorry you're under too much pressure to even think of these things so in that case i would say yes your focus should be on the prototyping stage rather than the discovery stage in that case you can apply design thinking where you focus on prototype based learning prototype and test cycles rapid prototype and test cycles to understand how can you enhance your product features maybe right. because that is probably because you're probably it's probably too late for you to go back and start the empathy research part because then nothing will work so you can so remember one thing design thinking while everybody puts it in a straight line of steps it's not a linear process it's a cyclic agile iterative process so you right. can start at the prototype stage use that as an opportunity to discover more about user experience user needs and see if you can iterate and improve as you go along i hope that helps you great next question is from arjun how to integrate design thinking into innovation process to benefit the organization i don't even see that question 
really something that you need to worry about simply because design thinking is the driver of innovation you should ask what is your organization's innovation process today if it is not design thinking yeah. now the fact is you don't need to call it design thinking you call it something else i don't care nobody should care but if you believe that your organization already has a process that is a, an innovation process you should ask what is that process if that process is about solving problems for people who happen to be your customers external customers internal stakeholders whatever mm -hmm. then you should ask where are you starting that process if your process is starting by need gathering or understanding current user experience then chances are you're doing design thinking already without calling it design thinking but if you aren't doing that you should seriously question what process are you using because anything else you are doing is assuming that you know the problem and then going ahead and trying to solve for it right. that is dangerous because you will end up creating something without doing research which might not work in the market and those and, and failure is expensive so i would say there is no conflict at all um the next question is from bera jewels i'm not sure of the question but uh, i'll take it up can we use design thinking can we use design thinking for getting certain solutions or concepts patented uh i would not know the answer to the patenting part of it because patenting as far as i know has a lot more technical inputs in it uh design thinking as a as a technology solutioning process obviously leads to solutions that get patented there's no debate on that but yeah. i am not an expert to talk about the patenting process as such again i think you you will be better served if you talk to a patent attorney in this or a patent expert in this right. i think right. arvind has a question and yeah arvind has a question yeah so is design thinking more in alignment with the with the hr industry or human experience management are design thinking roles open for consulting industry or only in product based companies where ux is really important I think that's again a good question. Uh, right. If you go back and look at it, the misconception is that design thinking is only something that product companies do because user experience is what product companies talk about. Hmm. But even if you are building an internal payroll system, even if you are building an expense management system, even yeah. if you are building an onboarding system in HR, okay, an appraisal system, you will have a human consumer of that who could be your internal stakeholder. it is important for you to understand that user that humans experience and design thinking is very very good at it i can safely tell you we do thousands and thousands of hours of design thinking in a year hundreds and hundreds of training programs in a month almost 70% of that work is in indian markets where we are not working with the end customer but mm -hmm. often enough improving internal processes and services and systems right so absolutely okay wherever there are human stakeholders involved arvin design thinking works and wherever the human involvement leads to complex problems design thinking works well therefore definitely in the hr space i would say 30% of our work work is in the user employee experience or employee engagement design which is all about from candidate experience to exit experience reducing attrition improving motivation anything you can think of and in the consulting industry well yes absolutely just for your information all the big four plus people like accenture and all have acquired design firms to build design thinking capabilities they are very very focused on it and they have nothing to do with building products it's so basically design it's not only related to your customers it's internal external wherever human i think wherever human needs are to be satisfied that's correct right curious to know how to implicate design thinking when you are a chartered accountant okay priyanka that's an interesting question uh you know i work a lot with finance teams and i think uh this is a conversation we sometimes have where i will go back to the earlier answer that i just gave as a chartered accountant do you have human customers i'm assuming yes the answer to that is now the fact remains is that do you understand their needs and why do they come to you 
Now, of course, as a chartered accountant, you are working in tax and compliance, and I don't think you want to be innovative or creative there. Creative accounting is a terrifying idea. I don't want to get there. But at the same time, can you design, let us say, your communication to your clients, and after understanding who they are and what are they looking for, how can you solve their questions better, answer their questions better, etc. I think that's pretty much the only area I can think of. You can explore that. At the end of the day, it's about solving for people. So if your clients are humans, you might want to invest in this. Right. So this is another question regarding. Uh, I mean, I think he's a business analyst. So how can a business analyst approach towards design thinking? How can it help in the field of a business analyst? Design thinking process. Is that your no. question, Rohan? No, no, no. I, I just took it from a private no. chat. Yeah, yeah. I'm just posting it for okay. everyone to see it. What are other ways? In... I'm not even sure what that other ways mean. Kindly help me other ways which can help me. Maybe he's thinking about talking about tools or is there any other courses which can help him master the uh, design thinking skills? So I don't know who, uh, the person's name here, but the fact is, you know, I wouldn't worry so much about tools. Design right. thinking should not be reduced to a process or tools. It is a philosophy. It's a mindset that are you curious at all times to understand humans and their problems before you're trying to solve. Them. If you can right. build that mindset, you will ask better questions. If you can ask better questions, you will become a better design thinker. Right. Okay? So I think that's where it would be. There are many courses online, Coursera, EDX, etc. They do all of that. Uh, there are offline courses also you can go and attend. But at the end of it, learn. Look, look at it this way: innovation. You cannot learn innovation without having an attitude of an innovator, the mindset of an innovator, who wants to solve problems, who's right. curious and is desirous of solving problems. So you might get all the degrees and diplomas in the world, but at the same time, you will change nothing. At the same time, people who are solving problems are not necessarily the ones who went through great uh, innovation courses. They're doing it because they want to. So my suggestion to you always is that apply design thinking in even the small problems you're facing. You yeah. will only get better as you go along. Then after that, yes, you can attend many courses. There are many options for you to try out. There's no problems with any of that. Is there any specific course that you would recommend or any specific book that you would recommend for design thinking? This is coming from a personal personal aspect. Uh, there are many books, I think. Uh, one of the books I always recommend for people to understand is that, first of all, think of design thinking, bigger than design thinking. Uh, one of the books I always recommend is by a gentleman called Clayton Christiansen. He, yeah. was the, is a Harvard, he was a Harvard professor who passed away last year. He is the father of the theory of disruption and he wrote a book called The Innovator's DNA. It's a very important first step into understanding how you can make innovation a behavior. Another great Got book it. I always recommend is a book by one of the greatest living designers today, a guy called uh, Donald Norman. Don Norman mm -hmm. wrote the essential book on design called The Design of Everyday Things. Again, a very strongly recommended book for you. Okay. Then there are other books, books by people like Tim Brown, books by Tim Kelly, uh, my professor at Darden, Jean Liedke. There are many books you could read on design thinking. Uh, but again, you know, Rohan, my perspective is I get this question a lot. Yeah. I can recommend five books to you, but they'll not change you at all. They'll not help you become good in design thinking. Design thinking is when you apply it. Try to start solving problems with a human centered approach rather than what I think the problem is <laughs> to understand the problem from the perspective of the person facing that problem. Correct. You will be far better in design thinking than reading a book or reading a book. Got it. Great. So, um, guys, we'll be able to take a couple of more questions before we come yes. to an end of the session. Yes. So, there's one more from Prashant Gupta. We often invest time and money towards uh, idea generated by design thinking and innovative thinking. Is there any way or process to stimulate the feasibility part? Stimulate. Okay. Simulate the feasibility part of it. Uh, if you are investing time and money towards idea generated by design thinking, Good job. Congratulations. I think if you are doing that, then design thinking actually bakes in the idea of prototyping and testing. 
there is no greater feasibility test than understanding from your user what is yeah. working for him or not you can exactly. do all kinds of statistical analysis sitting in a laboratory but till a user touches it feels it and applies it and tells you why it is not working nothing works so i would say that keep keep doing it here's a thing though prashant because if you are going to you really apply design thinking remember that good design thinking isn't only about taking the solution to the user at the prototype testing stage you can after you have empathized after you have discovered user needs and you frame a design problem or a design challenge okay what we call a point of view you can take it to the user and ask him am i on the right track mm-hmm. based on what he says you can refine your problem statement then when you brainstorm even before you prototype take the top 5 ideas to the user and say that out of the 5 which ones do you like let him choose it for you then you prototype and take it back to the user and say what do you think now and do that in an iterative cycle it is as many times you go to the user the more you do feasibility testing i hope that helps i hope that answers your question mr prashant continue your feedback got it got it okay so one so more question, one more question. we will have one more question from uh, the audience uh hi anirban this is sadhar hi sadhar uh if you could please allow me to go back to the questions in the series of questions which we had which which in which we were talking about uh, creative block right so uh, while i completely agree that okay uh, we need to experiment keep experimenting and you know we need to get rid of that failure of uh, sorry the fear of failure so there's one more thing which i feel leads to this creative block is the repetition of tasks now for an employee working on a particular module now he, he is asked to be creative but he is working on something in which he has to repeat the same task time and again uh now if he doesn't do that and if he you know starts thinking out of the box or something it leads to you know deviation from his uh, timeline or maybe something like that which and from his basic kra right so can design thinking be implemented in that particular area also where you know even if there is a repetition of task which cannot be avoided the person can still be you know motivated to do something mm. different see so that there's no easy or straight answer to that right okay. uh first of all if the task is repeated i, I mean it's a, it's a it's a mechanical task kind of okay uh in the last 10 years that i have done design thinking i have always said that here's the thing you know if you have you have to choose the problem where you want to apply design thinking in a lot of innovation language we say design thinking works when you are going to apply design thinking to a wicked problem a problem which is a complex problem so i'll give you an example you are sitting in a room and the bulb blows a fuse or you know you have to change the light bulb there is no point using design thinking to change a light bulb there is no point doing empathy research to discover right you right. get up okay take that bulb out put the bulb in you're done now if you think that that's a what we call a trivial problem and it therefore requires trivial task to solve it now if you are thinking that the building you are in how can you make that building more energy efficient okay how can you save your power bills by 50% now that's a complex problem because there are multiple stakeholders multiple dimensions multiple problems involved in it right that's where you might want to use design thinking to go and understand different perspectives different problems etc and then figure out what could be the best ways in which you would go about it so right. here's my here's my point to you and i have i'm almost out of time so let me quickly wrap, wrap this up for you um if you try to apply design thinking to things like a mundane task you will only get more frustrated because you will find probably no rewards no recognition and probably no returns on that investment exactly so pick and choose your battles there are other ways also you can develop your creativity for instance a uh, design thinking mindset is something that keeps asking for diverse collaboration 
so if you have time give devote your time to doing something on the side start painting you know join a voluntary organization uh do collaboration on a startup to build something on the side you will be able to build your creative muscles far better continue to do the job because there's no point frustrating yourself trying to do design look at it this way your car needs to you are you are you have a flat tire and your car needs to change its tire no point doing design thinking to replace the stepney okay right, right. but if you are going to build a car that is more intuitive that's where design thinking could be great or a better car that's where design thinking is great so identify the to put it bluntly pick your battles don't exhaust yourself in applying design thinking to the way you tie your shoelaces discover a better shoe using design thinking or improve the walking experience for people applying design thinking that's a good enough challenge for you and there you will have no problems on of this nature totally makes sense thank you so much anirban you're welcome great i think we have come to the end of the session uh, anirban do you have any closing thoughts i i mean i, I know that you are a mentor yourself in uh, for different government organizations so since qfas also is in the same uh, field of mentorship and trying to make mentorship available and viable do you, do you want to i mean maybe stress on the fact that mentorship is important and yeah. uh, just a few thoughts on it just throw some light on it as well. i think mentorship surely is important especially since as an entrepreneur for many years now uh, and as a mentor and i work pretty much across mentorship organizations in four countries yeah it's a very lonely journey you need support okay you need to talk to people you need to understand how there are first of all systems and processes and methods to solve problems which you may or may not know yeah so a good mentorship platform might be a good idea for you to get engaged with also talk to other people share ideas look for collaboration opportunities the greatest reason why people burn out is when they try to do everything by themselves it is impossible for a founder of an organization to be good in product good in finance good in recruitment good in you know communication good in everything and that's where i think mentorship support to build those necessary skills come in so i think it's a good idea for people to look at mentorship that's one side of it my if i have to talk closing comments on design thinking per se i would seriously ask people here that don't waste i won't say don't waste but don't worry too much about getting certified or you know spending time in classrooms to do it design thinking is all about application go out there and try it you know try to figure out how might i even improve the way uh, something is done in my locality in my community how might i do something better at home just develop the habit of asking questions observing and not jumping to conclusions not believing that i have all the answers design thinking should make you more humble right when i do design thinking that's the first thing my participants discover is that how little they know hmm. if you can build that as an attitude the open mindedness to go and discover you are on the right track boss you will discover so many ways in which you can solve problems so be genuinely interested in the human condition and right. be genuinely desirous of improving it solving it i don't want to talk like you know i'm not a gandhi or a mother teresa kind of talk i'm giving here but even if you have to build successful products and services and solutions knowing people's problems is a good place to start that's how uh, creative organizations from an intuit to a tesla to a, a vmware to an akamai to oracles of the world that i work with do it get on to build that habit you can't fail thank you thank you so much for your time mr anirban i hope this session was very helpful for all, for all the people who attended it and uh, thank you so much um, we'll catch you up next week next week for the next set of webinars thank you all thank, thank you. you thank you thank you sir thank you take care bye bye take care bye 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 guys